The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Rob. I've worked in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 in village schools and in Milton Keynes. And I'm Nicola, and I've taught Key Stage 2 from Year 3 all the way to Year 6 for quite a few years now. And I've also taught at university, inspiring future teachers to do the best they can in education. And today we are seeing what art we can create with our original story, Exploring the Water Cycle. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for drip, drop, plop. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback illustrated by Corky Paul's cracking protégé, Mario Coelho, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. In fact, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's signed up to be an Epic Educator so far, because by doing so, you are also supporting this podcast, so we can keep sharing these off-the-shelf lesson ideas every week. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Rob and Nicola here. And when we wrote this story, of course, one of the biggest challenges was going to be how to illustrate drip, drop and plop. Uh, water droplets are not your run of the mill kind of characters, really. Mario Coelho has done an absolutely incredible job of making them come alive. But that is what we might be asking our young ladies learners to do in this episode, perhaps. Let's start with some art outcomes for ages four to seven with you, Rob. Where would you go with this story? I've chosen three different paths to follow. First is a wanted poster. Okay. Or like a, a lost and found poster. Oh, right, I see, yeah. So each of the droplets says, oh, I'm looking for my friends. This is what they look like. Mm. So thinking, have you seen this droplet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call cool. 0800 treble one droplet. Yeah. So that would be a look at how to make marks accurately. That would be my mm. uh, reception foundation ages four to five challenge. Can you draw a droplet? And then can you make it look different to the other droplets? Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to be like looking for a, a haystack and a needle. Mm hmm. Moving further up the school, I'd start to kind of link it to science a bit and say, okay, we're going to draw the different parts of a plant. So I would definitely use this as a, an excuse to get outside and look at actual plants. Mm. What do the leaves look like? How are they different? What colours are they? Use the different colours that you can see. Recreate them using natural materials, but not picking them from live plants. Okay. Yeah. And then start to think about icebergs as well, because our initial thoughts about icebergs is, oh, they're white. Mm. Job done. But if you study an iceberg, then you'll see all kinds of different colors in it as well. So yeah. use of how to mix your colors to get those different shades of blue, white, and things like that as well. Yeah. I love the way you've sort of gone up in scale between those ideas, yeah. sort of the <laughs> microscopic with drip, drop, and plop, and then some, a little bit more macro with the flowers, and then whew, huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and does it all come into sort of just representing what's in front of you as accurately as possible? Because you, men you mentioned making marks accurately for the droplet activity. Would it come down to representing textures more accurately colors more accurately yeah so looking at the icebergs it would be uh, mixing the colors to create different colors as well mm -hmm. so rather than just saying okay well this iceberg has got a white top and the sides are bright blue how can we get it so it's not the blue that is just in your paint palette or coloring pencil so mixing it to create those different shades gotcha Hmm. 
How about the ages 7 to 11, though, Nicola? Can you expand on any of Rob's ideas there? Yes, love the idea of the painting. And there's so many different artists that have depicted water in various ways. Mm. For example, Monet with the water lilies from Hokusai with his big wave. I've spent quite a bit of time in my class last year looking at Japan and we looked at Hokusai's big wave and Mm. then they did their own interpretation and painted them with watercolours and it was sensational. And it's the same with looking at the water lilies, looking at the technique of Monet that he used with watercolours and blending colours together. So obviously starting off thinking about how you make those colours and then putting it into a painting linked to water. And if you want to go back one step in your local area, there's always aspects of water that you can you know can see so if you've got the chance to take some photographs and we don't often think about photography with our aged children but there's ipads in the school and Mm. if there is a water near you that obviously you do a risk assessment for and you're safe to go to taking photographs of the sea or the river or the lake that's nearby or getting children to do that at home and getting the parents to email the photographs and using those as stimulus for their own artwork yeah would be really nice but yeah I, th- I think children would be quite excited to have a project at home you know for home learning for taking photographs of water in its different forms from mm. ice to steam to water and then you could almost create a, a display of that photography that the parents have emailed in because when children are excited about something they'll badger their parents to mum dad please 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 email my teacher and they'll, they'll do mm. it and you'll get some great examples of those different elements yeah I, I'm, I'm pleased you've introduced photography into this podcast really because i was thinking as you and rob were speaking just how how difficult I always used to find it to draw or paint water. I guess it's because being a liquid, it can very often be moving or it's very reflective. So it's it's one of those things that is really, really hard to represent accurately. But if you've um, got a, a good picture and then if teachers aren't confident doing it themselves, there's some great clips now on YouTube of how to shade using cross hatching or oh, right. circling different techniques that you can use when you're shading. If you're using shading techniques that children then can apply to a picture of a raindrop. And then mm. often I find that some of the children in the class are amazing artists and will go off and have a go and then use that as an example to inspire the rest of the class, take a photograph of their work show it on the board and get those children to get ideas from each other oh that's fantastic can, can you include the links to some of those youtube videos in your resources i will find some yes thank you um but i i do still love the additional accessibility i guess you get from including photography within art so if you have any children who like me were not confident at all when it came to doing any kind of drawing or painting then yeah allowing them to use photos as well and steam i guess would be much easier to represent photographically than yeah but you could i mean you could easily artistically use charcoal to show steam okay. within that as well and, and there's some really nice um techniques you can use that involve water like marbling with children if you've ever done that before oh yeah which could actually involve water but link it to an art form as well Mm, yeah that's sadly all we have time for in this episode folks if you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast or if there's a subject you're soon to teach that you'd like us to cover you can find us on social media using at teach happily or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, Drip, Drop, and Plop will help us plan lessons in physical education. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So... Cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon!